Then at another level uh, is spirits, the notion of spirits. <laughs> spirits. And these spirits, uh, they uh, are disembodied forms of power that uh, scoot around everywhere. They're, they're just everywhere. And uh, so you've got to be careful not to offend them. Um, they, uh, they can be up to mischief. Um, I mentioned the other day how that uh, the uh, fences around the homesteads in Tanzania where I grew up, they're not around anymore. People got rid of all that stuff. But uh, back there in those days when I was a little boy, every, every homestead had this fence. And uh, it was to keep out the spirits and the divinities and the witches, you know, uh, things like that. And the idea was that these thorns are so sharp and jagged that if a spirit gets too close, he'll go, ouch, 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 ouch. He'll get hurt by that, by that thorn. So he'll keep his distance from those thorn hedges. Um, so you're trying to put a wall up to protect yourself from, from these spirits. So the spirits also can be manipulated. It takes an expert to understand how to deal with them. Closely related to spirits then are divinities. And divinities are taking on the form of, um, of, um, of identification. You can actually, uh, actually pray to the divinity. <laughs> you can uh, offer sacrifices to the divinity. Um, and there's all kinds of divinities around. They're scooting around everywhere. And some hover around water holes. And some divinities and sp spirits and the divinities have a very collegial relationship. Sometimes they will, they will hover around uh, uh, groves of trees and that kind of thing. Uh, you got to watch out for, for these divinities. And again, it takes experts to really understand them, uh, to how to manipulate, manipulate them and keep them happy. Boy, you want to keep the divinities happy uh, or they, uh, they, might, they might get you. Now, at another level are the ancestral spirits. <clears throat> I'm going to put this over here. The ancestral spirits, they are the spirits of the dead. That when a person dies, if you do continue to live in the next life, then you become an ancestral spirit. And you hover around, most often hover around the homestead where you had lived when you were, when you were living. And so there's this awareness that the ancestors are with us. They've never gone away. They're, they're with us uh, hovering around our homestead. And you have to treat them also very carefully. I mean, here is great grandpa who died back there 50 years ago. And uh, his spirit is hovering around the homestead all these years. So you'll, you'll, never, you'll never speak unkindly about him um, as you recollect the kind of person he was. And sometimes, and whenever you eat, whenever you eat, uh, you'll pour a bit of beer on the ground and then a bit of food on the ground and say, oh, spirits of the ancestors, great grandpa, grandpa, grandma, you know, welcome to the meal with us. Join us for this evening supper that we're eating together. And so you have a prayer to the ancestors, inviting them to participate in the meal, always in awareness of their presence with you. And you want to keep them happy. And it's very important that if, uh, if your father now is getting old and ill and approaching death, that you really keep him happy right up until his death. Because if dad departs this life and he's mad, yo, 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 you can really be in trouble. Because after he's died and his spirit is released and continues to exist, why, uh, he can do a lot of mischief if he feels that you are treating him unkindly. So I know we lived in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, which was um, uh, and it, it, pastoring a church of, of a particular tribe known as Luo, mostly Luo were in that church. And uh, uh, you know, over and over again, someone in the congregation would say, this week I'm going back home to, to be with my father for a week because he's almost dead. 
and I need to be sure that he is happy that everything is well between us and so forth. So he would scoot out there and then come back again and then go out again, that kind of thing. Of course, we do the same thing. I'm very concerned that, uh, that um, we're, we're always concerned about having proper relationships with our parents, not so. When death is at hand, we take a good inventory about, about how things are. We don't want to depart them to depart, not at peace, um, but uh, when you believe that these ancestors are around, you give particular attention to this. Um, yeah. So those, those are some of the, some of the uh, uh, forces and powers which uh, these traditional religions believe in. Um, and then there's totems. Totems. Totems are uh, uh, nature divinities from whom we come. For example, I mentioned earlier on today how this dear African saint told me that his totem and the totem of his tribe was the leopard. They, they believed their tribe came from the leopard. And you remember the Kikuyu people? They said their, their, their people came from the fig tree. And so each tribe in the Africa I grew up in had a different totem, which is a natural divine figure uh, that, uh, from whom they came. And so you would honor that totem as your divinity, as your God. Uh, you know, offer sacrifices to the totem from time to time. Certainly never speak, speak unkindly or act unkindly toward the totem. Take good care of that fig tree. I mean, after all, that's where we came from, you see. And so you have these totemic powers as well. And then, in the midst of all of this, um, you have the experts then who know how to handle and manipulate these different powers. And these experts are referred to as the shamans. The shamans. The shamans know how to manipulate these powers, either for good or for evil. And like I said earlier on, the witches then are persons who explicitly are giving themselves to use these powers for evil. And the witches are not always known. You don't always know who the witch might be. Uh, but then sometimes you do know who the witch might be. And then the whole society is kind of scared of that witch. And uh, sometimes, in fact, they would decide to kill the witch because uh, the powers are too dangerous to let this person continue to live. And so you have the shamans who generally use their power for good but then some of these experts develop an angry, bitter spirit, and they can become witches who can be very, very destructive. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and our financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tbsseminary.com.